if you love sawfish fritters, but you just don't know how to make that recipe and you love ordering it from the store, continue watching my video and I'll show you how to make this delicious recipe that you'll want to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So today we're going to be making some saltfish fritters and I'm just using the uh, boneless saltfish that's in the package. But you can use any saltfish uh, that you have. You can use the one with the bone in, which I would probably prefer. But this is just what I had around um, where I am. So basically, I just took the saltfish out the package and it comes in a lot of salt. So what you're going to want to do is take it out and rinse off all the salt off the saltfish. After you do that, then you're just going to fill it up with water. And the next step that we're going to do is that we're just going to boil the once saltfish. Once the saltfish is on the stove, we're just going to want to put the heat to medium. And once it starts boiling, we're just going to rinse the saltfish. So the next step in this process is to get all the vegetables that... We are going to put in this fritters and this is definitely optional and it's based on you. You can add all of what I'm adding or you can omit some or you can add other things to it. So this is basically all dependent dependent on you. So I'm just adding about one scallion and everything that I'm adding into this, you want to chop it finely. So uh, just like how I'm chopping the scallions, that's just how you're going to want to chop everything up. Uh, so after I chop the scallions, I'm just going to chop up some tomato. And this is optional and everything is all depending on you. But you're just going to want to chop it up finely. I'm going to use about two tomatoes, but you can use one if you'd like. If you don't like tomatoes, I would suggest that you do add it. Um, if you don't want to add uh, two, you can add one or even half a tomato, but it definitely gives it some flavor. Um, so this is, like I said, all based on you and your preference. So after the tomatoes, I'm just going to add some onion. And just like the tomatoes, you don't have to add uh, the half an onion, which is what I'm adding. You can add a quarter of an onion. Um, everything is basically on preference. I'm just going to keep reiterating it because people are probably going to ask me, um, in the comment section or just ask me on my Instagram. Everything is optional. You can even add other things in here that I'm not adding, but this is uh, normally what you usually add. So I'm doing in half an onion and you're going to want to chop that up finely. Um, and this is just the way that I'm chopping it up. Um, but just make sure everything is finely chopped. And I'm just going to add everything to the container uh, and then after the onions uh, is chopped finely, then what you're going to want to do is get some thyme. I know that some people have um, thyme, dry thyme that they buy in the store that comes inside a container. Um, if you have that, that's actually pretty great uh, because it's kind of hard to... Uh, get the thyme leaves and you have to just remove the stems because you don't want to add the stems because you definitely don't want to eat it. It's, it's not edible, the stems. So what you're going to want to do is if you have the fresh thyme, just take it, uh, do what I'm doing, and you're going to go the opposite way of where the leaves are growing and you're going to run your fingers down it to remove all the leaves. And um, this is just an easy way to do it. Uh, so if you have the thyme in the bottle that's already dried, what you're going to want to add is probably about a half to a, one, half a tea, one half teaspoon to a teaspoon of the uh, thyme. And this is just basically um, based on how much you prefer to add in, uh, in your fritters. So everything is optional. And after I add all the thyme leaves, then what you're going to want to do is get some bell peppers. And I'm using about a quarter of a bell pepper that's de-seeded. And you're just going to want to chop that up finely as well. And in the corner, you see that I have some 
cheese. That's some ch sharp cheddar cheese. Uh, so basically, I'm going to do half of my fritters plain, and then the other half is just going to ha have some cheddar cheese inside. Uh, so, you know, that's just something I just wanted to spice it up a little bit. This, you don't have to do this. This is just what I'm going to do. Um, some people add sausage to it, but everything is based on. So it. the saltfish is boiling. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain this and add so we're just going to get a strainer and then we're going to use a strainer to strain all of the water from the saltfish. And basically, I'm going to just boil this twice just because the saltfish that's in the package that I showed you earlier, um, they're not really that salty. So you can get away with just boiling it twice. But if you get the the whole saltfish with the bone in it, you're going to want to boil that more than two times because that's usually really salty. So the thing is that what you're going to want to do is basically soak it overnight and then boil it the next day when you're ready to use it. So what I'm doing here is breaking up the saltfish and the pieces that I am going to use in the fritters. And this is just makes it 10 times easier to get out all the salt. So this is just a key step that I, I personally usually do. And then after I break it up, then I'm just going to add water to it until it covers it about an inch above where the sawfish is. So I'm then going to put it back on the stove on medium heat and reboil. So right here, I'm just going to get a separate bowl and I'm just going to chop up all the uh, cheese that I'm going to use in this rest in the other half of this recipe and just watch to see how fine I'm chopping it. I don't want to have it in big chunks because I want to see the uh, cheese all throughout the fritter when after I fry it. So you're just going to want to chop it up finely like I'm doing here. And like I said, this is definitely an optional step. You don't have to add cheese to it, um, but I'm just going to add it in half of my uh, recipe. And I'm just going to put it to the side because I'm not going to want to put it inside right now. Like after I fry the amount that I'm going to use for the fritter without the cheese, then I'll add it to the rest of the dough uh, with the cheese. So now that the sawfish is boiling, we're just going to want to take this off the stove before it overflows and strain it. So I'm just going to strain it in the strainer again, the saltfish. And then after I strain it, then I'm just going to run a lot of cold water over it. And then after I run a lot of cold water over the saltfish, what I'm going to do is just taste it. And like I say in all my videos, when you're cooking, it's good to taste everything. Because if you don't taste it, you're not going to know the progress of your food, especially if you're not really that great of a cook. So the best thing to do is to always taste it. So even though I know it should be okay um, after this, I'm just going to taste the saltfish just to make sure it's not salty because I could have gotten a batch that's just more saltier than normal but this was perfect and I didn't need to boil it a third time. So now we're at the most complex part of this recipe and we're just gonna, just going to add the saltfish to the vegetables and we're just going to mix everything up evenly so everything is well distributed throughout because we want all the vegetables to be cohesive throughout this uh, recipe. Then we're just going to add about two cups of flour. Then after we add the two cups of flour, then we're just going to mix everything together. Before you add anything else, make sure you mix all the flour throughout the vegetable with the saltfish. And you're just going to want to make sure that all the vegetables and all the saltfish is like well coated uh, on this. So after everything is well coated, then we're going to add the bacon powder. So we're going to add about one and a half tablespoons of bacon powder right now. Or you can add, if you don't have a tablespoon, one tablespoon equals three teaspoons. So you can add about four and a half teaspoons of bacon powder. So after we do that, we're just going to want to make sure everything is well mixed throughout like we did earlier because you don't want anything sitting in one place. So after we add the one and a half teaspoon, sorry, one and a half tablespoons of bacon powder, then we're going to add the black pepper. So we're going to add about two teaspoons of black pepper and after we add the two teaspoons of black pepper we're gonna just mix everything together like 
we've been doing. So every time I add something, I'm just going to mix everything throughout so everything is evenly in this recipe. Then after that, we're going to add about two to three teaspoons of salt. So with the salt, everything is by taste. So after I add a two to three teaspoons of salt, then I'm going to mix everything together. But later on, after I mix the make the dough, I'm just going to taste it to make sure we have the salt to the right consistency. Then we're just going to get some water. And right here is my mistake. When you add the water, you're going to want to add a little bit at a time. And the water definitely got away from me, which is definitely a rookie mistake. And you can see how watery this is, which is not what you want. Please, please, please add a little bit of um, a little bit of water at a time. So because I made a mistake, the only thing with this is that is very forgiving, and I'm just gonna have to just add some more flour to this mixture, and uh, I'm just gonna save myself. So if this happens to you, which is why I just left it in the video you're just going to just add more flour to your mixture. So we're going to want to get it to a certain consistency and I'm going to show you what consistency you want it to be. So I'm just going to add my last cup of flour and after I add the last cup of flour, I'm just going to mix everything thoroughly. And as you can see, the mixture definitely got thicker before it was like really thin and runny because I added too much water by mistake. So I'm just going to mix everything together. And you can see how thick this mixture is. This is the consistency that you want when you add your water. So you're going to add the water little by little until you, until you get this consistency. You don't want it too thick that is not running off the spoon, but you don't when it's too thin that is running off too quick uh, is just running off slowly and just right so this is the consistency that you want and that you should always get so now I'm just gonna taste the flour to just make sure to just make sure it have the right amount of salt because you don't want the mixture to be fresh so if you need more salt at this time you can add it uh, but if not you're so good now to you're go. just going to want to get a frying pan that you're going to use and put it on medium heat and you're just going to add enough oil in the pot because fritters they definitely do soak up a lot of oil so you don't want to add too little oil because that's going to burn the fritters and that's not what you want. So then you're just going to get a spoon and you're just going to scoop it inside. And if you don't have like a regular big spoon and you have like a ice cream scooper, a big ice cream scooper, you can also use that as well. And that will probably control the um, mixture better than you scooping it with a regular spoon. But this definitely works for me, so it's fine. So after you add the scoop, the mixture inside, just, you're just going to want to wait until uh, it's brown on the underside before you flip it. So you're just going to leave it for a couple of minutes and you'll definitely see that the sides are just getting browner. And then after you see that it's getting brown, then you can flip it. So you can tell that it's cooking thoroughly inside. You can see the bubbles and this is how you know everything is just coming together just right. So now I'm just going to flip it and if use a, you can use a fork to flip it, but you can see how much um, of a struggle this is for me. So if you have like a tongue, you can definitely use a tongue that would probably be uh, much better because look at the struggle that I have to go through with this fork. And I definitely do have a tongue, but I didn't want to be, um, didn't want to take it out because I was just being lazy. So just uh, use a tongue or use a fork, but you can see how wonderful this is looking and how brown it's getting. So after, like I said, after I uh, do this, I'm just going to um, fry half of the batch. Then the other half, I'm just going to add the cheese. And then after I add the cheese to that batch, then I'm just going to mix it around and then fry the batch with the cheese. But I'll have two mixtures. So this is how the fritter with out the cheese is looking and you can tell how nice and golden brown it is you can see all the vegetables inside so I'm just going to break inside to show you how it looks and look how wonderful and gorgeous and delicious inside is looking uh, you can see in this one it has a lot of tomatoes but you can also see the salt fish inside and all the other vegetables and you can tell how 
everything is cooked through thoroughly and this is just some delicious goodness that everyone should try so this is how the fritter with the cheese is looking and it's just looking nice and golden brown and you can see the nice crispy yellow cheese around the sides and it's definitely not burnt which is what you don't want to do is cook just right and if you look inside you can see the saltfish the tomatoes the scallions and everything is just like piping hot and just looking delicious inside and you can just tell how crispy the outside is which is just going to be delicious so definitely try it with the cheese here's a finished product of my fritters and this is such an easy recipe to follow. It might have a little bit of steps that you have to do, but it's definitely worth it in the end. So please, please, please try it and let your friends and family try it by sharing my videos. And if you've liked this video so far, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can always get an update on all my videos. Yeah.